Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nupula. Before we start this video, I just want to give out a free advertisement for a hobby shop known as Counterbalance Cards and Games. If you're ever in West Virginia and Canal City, please visit them. The website will be posted on this video. Counterbalance Cards and Games deals with all types of hobbies including Magic Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, 40k, Warhammer, and any other board games you can think of. When all in doubt, please remember counterbalance cards and games. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nupula. Um, I just recently looked at the top table update for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship in Dallas, Texas. And to be quite honest, I'm not surprised by it. The majority of them are spirals. Um, the only exception to this is that there is a Pendulum Magician deck, a Trickstar deck, and a Dinosaur deck. So, what am I wanting to talk about? Well, I, I keep hate saying I normally don't do this, but I keep finding myself in these positions where I am going to have to do this because it needs to be talked about. Or because of some unnecessary nonsense and now this is the first one and not the latter so spirals are pretty much showing what they can do within three days of their release and I have to say I'm not surprised by the outcome I knew it was gonna happen and there's not much we can really do about it now the fact that dinosaurs are actually on the top tables at the moment is kind of surprising for me on round 11. But, depending on how many people there are, depending on how many rounds it's going to be. I didn't check that information, but I can't imagine the championships are going to go on forever. So, my prediction right now, Spirals will take the top. And... Somewhere, Pendulum Magicians will be in the top as well. If not, Spirals will take all the top. But I wouldn't mind seeing Dinosaurs being in there, but I just don't see it. So, where does this leave us? Well, if you're a competitive player, you already know what you're playing. Spirals is the deck right now, and anything else is just secondary. Like, you're, you're not going to get around on, unless you plan on defeating Spyros themselves. Now, Trick Stars, the only thing I can think of the reason why they're in there at the top is the simple fact that they have the element of surprise in a sense that they can burn Spyros before they can do anything. But I just don't see that. I think there's another element in there. We just haven't had a chance to get the reports exactly of how their games are being played. But Spirals themselves not only can spam the field, but also has good recovery in terms of getting resources and stuff like that in that same turn if you're playing, if your hand doesn't break. Now, Spirals do brick. They don't break as often as most people will like when they're facing against them, but they will break. And they'll break even more against the uh, mirror matches. But this begs the, this begs the question for the non-competitive people, the casual players. What does it do for them? Well, one, Spyros are going to be, they're not going to be the most expensive deck. It is going to be the anti-meta cards that are going to be expensive. Mostly one card in particular. Evenly matched. And this is where this discussion goes. Evenly matched is going to be one of those cards that's going to be like Dimensional Barrier all over again. It's going to be at a certain price. And then it's going to go skyrocketing. Because Evenly matched is one of those hand traps that is so damn good that no one's realizing what it can do. Because that's the only weakness of Spirals right now is evenly matched. You play that against them, they lose. It's kind of hard to recover from a negative five when the other player just has evenly matched either in their main or side deck. 
I guarantee you they're going to have it in the side deck for the most part. But some people are probably going to play in main because they know what they're facing. At least in a competitive market. Now, casual wise, you're screwed. Uh, if you're if you wanted to play evenly matched and everything like that, I hope you have at least 150 to 200 dollars to spend on because that's going to how it's going to be. The worst case scenario, this car is going to go up to 100 dollars a piece. I don't see that happening, but I do see it going from 50 dollars at minimum to about 80 dollars at max. It's going to be like the Ash Blossom. Um, in terms of casual play and everything like that, you're not going to see it unless you pull it. You're not. There, there's only a few ways this can go for a casual player. One, you pull it, and you're that lucky. You can pull three of them. I just don't see that happening, at least not in my area. Two, you buy them, obviously, but you're going to be spending around $150 to $300, depending on how the market goes. Or you are very good at trading, and congratulations, you're, you're very good at that. But the point I'm, I'm trying to make here is this. Evenly match is going to be the card of this set. It is not double helix or anything like that. Double helix is going to be a good card, sure, for spirals and everything like that, but it's going to be easier to acquire than it is this stupid thing. Now, I wouldn't be angry about this so much if the simple fact that Konami America, Konami North America, however you want to go by it, keeps having this absurd obsession of making good cards secret rares when the counterpart japan has them either as common or at most a super rare now i understand their business but why is it no matter what and i mostly have to blame japan for this one because they keep making these cards why is it that when we have a card that can be used for the anti-meta, for the most part, it's a secret rare? I'm sick of these secret rares that are that can help us for the casual players and everything like that. But you update their rarity so high that the market is just going to be flooded with them. You, Japan hates, well, I should say Konami at this point. Konami hates the third market, and yet. They are fueling it with the secret rares. Get rid of the secret rares. If you do that, the market crashes when it comes to the overly priced cards. Maybe not as drastically as I like it to be, but every time you bring out a card that was a common in Japan and make it to a secret rare, you fuel the third market, which you hate. Because you've already tried to do this with the gold series you tried it with the special editions and everything like that it's good that you're trying to do something about the third market because the third market right now is crap there is no real benefit in the third market when it comes to a casual player sure the competitive players will argue that it's the best thing in the world but they're competitive players they don't care they don't care about um, diversity or anything like that whatever is the best deck they'll go for they will not go for people who have creative or creativity they will not go for people who want to try out different decks and everything like that and it's upsetting because the game itself was based on creativity now it is based on you know what is the best deck and how is it can defeat everything in, in the rogue spectrum or everything but we keep i don't know if konami japan keeps doing this as a matter of false hope but they keep bringing out good cards that can actually get against these meta decks and everything like that but you always put these stupid cards in the highest rarity possible now on the offhand y'all did this for meta cards like um Rescue Rabbit at the beginning because Rescue Rabbit was a common in Japan. It became a secret rare for us. So, I don't know. This is one of the reasons why I retire from competitiveness because it's just an endless cycle of stupidity that keeps coming up. We already had to deal with zoos 
Finally got rid of finally got rid of them. True Kings are still there. They just have Masterpiece now that that they can really work with. But he is still a threat. He's not as big of a threat as Spyros or Pendulum Magicians. I want to say dinosaurs are in that category, but I think dinosaurs can actually do more damage if left alone. Um, like I've seen it before at one locals a while back. Dinosaur was defeating pendulums real badly, super badly. But the problem I have is not so much about the decks, it's so much about the cards that can be used against them being extremely high priced and extremely hard to get. Because it used to be decks themselves would have high rarity cards. Now it's cards that can actually go against them or help them that's high rarity and it's hurting the casual players more than it is hurting anything competitively and competitive players can argue all they want about this but the casual players have the fan the the player base has more casual players than it does have competitive players right now and that's mostly because all the older competitive players are sick and tired of the garbage that's been going on with every other deck that comes out is the most brokenest thing known to man. And people are going to say, well, Nupula, you played Burning Abyss. I played Burning Abyss on a whim. I never expected Burning Abyss to be one of those top tier decks at the time when Duelist Alliance came out. No one saw that coming until at least about a couple of weeks later. But I in gen generally like Burning Abyss. So, I always felt like it was, a, it was a new starting point for the decks for the future. Unfortunately, we keep running into scenarios where Konami wants to improve on older decks. Dinosaurs, probably the exception to this, because dinosaurs didn't need the new support. Because they weren't doing anything since Dino Rabbit. Uh, Monarchs never needed that support. I don't care what anyone says on that. Monarchs should have just died of where they were. But no, they had to get new support and then we had to end up having to limit it slash ban whatever we needed for that. Zoos was just a mistake. I don't even know why they made that. But Konami, I understand you need to make you need to make decks that people are willing to buy. I understand that. But if you go more towards the creative route, instead of just keep building these broken decks, then you would probably get more people wanting to go into the competitive than just casual. But the problem is you keep every other set anymore. It's like broken deck. There is no deck that can compete with another deck. Unless you're going the casual route. Competitive deck wise, there's always one deck. One deck. Back in the Duelist Alliance era, there were five decks. And that was probably one of our best formats because we had diversity and we had the mindset of, you know, what deck is going to beat what. It was Burning Abyss, Shadows. Satel Knights, Quill Forts, and I can't remember what that last one was. Necros, that's right. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to do that, but Necros kind of skipped my mind at that moment. But the thing of it is, you didn't know what deck was going to be the best because they kept getting more support and everything like that. Granted, Necros was the most expensive of the decks, and Burning Abyss was the cheapest at the time. Uh, Dante was the only expensive card at that moment. But, anyone who picked up any of those decks had a chance. Heck, Satellanites was the worst deck to go against. Regardless of what Necros could do and everything like that, Satellanites had that stupid counter trap. But, I'm, I'm ranting more than I should. But like I said, it, it's not about 
what the best deck is and everything like that because as soon as you see what Konami is doing you can already see who's going to win the YCS and everything like that and that's why I don't hardly ever check on the YCS because I know what's going to happen and there's no like if dinosaurs win it I'll be surprised if Trickstar wins it, it's probably more of an upset win than anything because Trickstar is, well, I've already done a video on them and that, and that was a 30 minute video. I'm trying to keep this at least this 20 minutes minimum or max, just to say, but Spyros is the number one deck. Pendulum Magician will be the second, if anything. Not second place for this event or anything like that, but they're the secondary deck to go to. Trick stars are more of a sadist build, but I, I like to see dinosaurs get to the top 16 place and everything, but I just don't see it. I just see, in my mind, I just see nothing but spiral, 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 and maybe a pendulum magician deck. Um, earlier we see an ABC deck but there was only one, and now it's not even in existence in the current uh, tabletop at the moment. So, if anything, that's just my views. Take it how you want. But I'm more for the casual players than I am for competitive, and I have been since, God, it's been over a year. It's been over a year since February. So, without further ado, let, you, let me know what y'all think about it, and I'll get back to you. Later.